by a show of hands, how many in this room think they're pretty darn good at what they do? That would be every hand. That would be every hand. Okay, all right. Be because we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't even be in this room if we weren't pretty darn good at what we do. Now, be, be, listen real carefully before you respond to this next one, okay? And again, by a show of hands, and listen carefully. By a show of hands, how many in this room think they've already reached 100% of their full potential in this life? See, there you have it. There you, not a single hand. And there you have the premise for our discussion. And on some level, the premise for our gathering. And that is that there's more in us and we all know it. There's more in us and we all know it. And if ever there was a time to, you know, get what's really in us out into the physical expression and experience of our lives, our work, that time is now. The good news is men and women of great scientific genius have been studying on this very issue. I have read their reports and I am reporting in. I have the great pleasure to share with you a model of human achievement that is going to answer the question of where does the leverage come from. And we're going to start out, it's actually a four-part model, and I've broken it down to three principles and one major primary achievement secret that comes from awareness from the new studies. Last November, last November, the thing is, in fact, I've lost control of this section of the room. I'll see if I can't get it back later on. So, Last November, <laughs> I'm invited to be the after-dinner keynote speaker at the annual conference gathering of the Plumbing, Heating, Cooling Contractors of California, a party animal group if ever there was one. <laughs> You'd have fit right in, Jeff. <laughs> so, and I'm sitting at the round top having a little dinner prior to go up to give a little presentation on, on the service leadership model and uh, plumbing, heating, cooling contractor guys, and this is word for word how it went. He nudges me on the shoulder. He says, so you're a motivational speaker? I said, well, I don't really use the M word, and I don't think of myself in those terms. I think of myself as a behavioral scientist with a focus on the principles of human achievement and life fulfillment. And he said, well, that's all well and good, but do you know a thing about motivation? <laughs> And I said, well, you know, I've been actively and academically studying for 31 years. I've been sharing from the platform for 15 years. I'm getting great results in my, in my own life with the information I've organized, and so are my client groups. I know a thing or two. He said, we got a great motivational system down where we work. I said, what's that? He said, it's a big sign on the wall in the employee lounge that says, one mistake, and you're out of here. <laughs> That's your system. <laughs> Works real good, he said. But that's that old model. That's that old model. That's that model for years where we attempted to motivate ourselves and each, and each other with coercion and a subtext of fear. And that model never worked. And the new awareness, the new studies allow us to come to another understanding. And that is that all of what we used to call motivation. We've misled ourselves by thinking of all of this as a thing to be pursued in and of itself. But the new awareness allows us to come to an understanding that it's not a thing in and of itself. It's a byproduct of another pursuit. The and that pursuit is human creativity. Passion, energy, enthusiasm, creativity, all right? Courage, even love. And we're going to talk about love today because we're going to talk about opening our hearts in a larger way to our life and our work. But all of that is a byproduct of the human creative process. What has happened in the entire study of human achievement is that we've shifted away from what we used to call motivation and we're studying how do humans create the results that they truly want, all right? This is generative human creativity, not how do we do the things we're currently doing kind of more creatively, but how do we create results for ourselves that don't currently exist? The real questions are the ones that activate the human creative process on a really deep level, and they are this. This is part one of a four-part model I'm a, I'd like to share with you today, and that's what is it in your heart that you truly want to create, and how good can you stand it? This is what we call desired reality. It's one part of a four-part structure. Now, if we want to activate the human resource and the inner resource of the team, of the group, we use the same question. We just change the pronouns. What is it that we, as a group, truly want to create and how good can we stand it? This is what we call desired reality. 
And if you ever get unclear in this world and you're seeking clarity, all you ever have to do is check in with that classic American philosopher, Yogi Berra, who once told us so wisely, if you don't know where you're going, you might end up someplace else, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>